if I let it go, it would eventually get to a faster speed. So it has the potential to move faster and to, and to, con and to, and to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy, okay? And I'm touching on the conservation of energy a little bit here. So if you take the, the limit of this whole situation and you go to the Empire State Building and you, you hold a bag of pennies off the, the top of the roof and you let them go, it's going to fall a long way down to the ground. It's going to gain a lot of speed, okay? And so it's going to have a, a much larger kinetic energy than if I were just to hold it a few feet off the ground, okay? Second thing I'd like to say, just totally qualitatively, is if you were to take a, this is just a pencil, okay? And I'm holding it this far above the ground. Well, let's say I were to hold a water buffalo this high off the ground, something that weighs, you know, 20 tons or something, and I let it go, okay, from the same height as I let, let, let go of this pen. Well, the buffalo is much, much heavier. So for any given height, something that weighs more or something really what I'm trying to say has more mass is going to have more potential energy because something that has more potential energy, is, it's going to be able to punch into the ground um, more than a, a bag of cotton balls would, okay? So this is all fine and dandy, and that's a, that's a really good introduction, I think, into potential energy. But let's go ahead and put a little bit of math to it so that you can understand what you're going to actually see in your physics textbook. Okay? What you have here is the ground. Okay? This is just simply the ground here, the floor of a, of a room or something like that. Okay? And then okay, right here I have a box with a mass m. Okay? And this box is above the floor with some height, let's just call it H1, okay? Some height, it could be 5 inches, it could be 4 meters or whatever, and it has some mass M, and I know what this mass is, okay? Okay? Now I take this box and I move it upward. So obviously something has to be holding the box to begin with here and suspending it above the floor, otherwise it would just fall, okay? So I'm holding it. But then I take this box and I lift it up physically, just like I'm lifting this pen right now, up to another height, okay? And I'm going to draw it over here, okay? And again, it's the same mass, okay? And uh, in this case, all the way to the ground, it's height H2. Now, we've already said, since it's the same mass, okay, this box, when I'm holding it higher off the ground, has more potential energy because it's higher off the ground and therefore if I were to let it go, it would fall farther and it has more potential to wreak havoc on the ground than this guy here, okay? So what I want to do is I want to give you the formula for potential energy, which is super easy. The potential energy, which I will abbreviate with PE, okay, is just simply equal to the mass of whatever it is you're talking about times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height above the ground, okay, um, times the height. So this is a physical measurement of the potential energy of a system. Now the good news is the units of potential energy are super easy to remember. We've said work has a unit of joules, kinetic energy has a unit of joules, and potential energy also has a unit of joules. So everything's consistent. Everything with energy or work is sort of like kind of a transfer of energy, they all have the unit of joules, okay? So that's super, super simple to remember, okay? Now one thing I would like to say kind of qualitatively here, when I take this box and I lift it up to a higher height, okay, obviously it's going to take effort for me to do that, right? And since you know that it's going to take some force to push this box up, okay, and you know that you're going to move this box through some distance, which will be H2 minus H1, 